Okay, the next thing is capillary runs. This is, I think, one of the two most important things that we actually changed in training. The other things were structural. How do we change, you know, the, the, whole, the whole team, the whole, uh, what we do with our program. But this is down to nuts and bolts. Um, when I started coaching, I think our longest run that we did with the boys was maybe eight miles. And I remember doing with one of my top runners, um, we ran all the way down to downtown Salt Lake City to West High School because their uh, football was playing there. And then we got a ride back on the bus from, uh, to Murray from West High School on the bus. And it was nine and a half miles. It was like, that was, those were the longest runs we did. And I was reading in, uh, in uh, Lydiard, it's like, oh, you got to go longer than that. And I didn't understand why the, the importance of, of a long run. And so to help my student, my runners understand why we need to do long runs, because so, a lot of kids, especially young ones, like, I don't, they've only run at the junior high maybe three miles or four miles. So um, I call them capillary runs. And uh, one thing that really influenced me in the summer 2008 Track Coach magazine, they had a reprint of an article on capillarization from a British journal. And uh, I was talking about this in California a couple years ago. And a coach came up or emailed me and said, hey, um, where do you get a copy of that? And so I checked with Track Coach magazine is published by Track and Field News. So I check with them, and you can buy back issues of Track and Field or of Track Coach Magazine from Track and Field News, but the only one that they don't have in stock over the last 25 years is the summer 2008. And I lent mine out to a coach probably about 10 years ago, and I never got it back, so I don't even have a copy. But there's a lot of really good stuff online if you just put in capillarization. So what is capillarization? Okay, so the idea is you need to put your body underneath, un, underneath, underneath enough stress for a long enough period so that it's going to adapt to that. So we need to have an aerobic st stress put on between 70 and 90 minutes for the body to say, hey, I'm being stressed for a long time. I need to change something. And so the body starts building capillaries into the muscle tissue and into the lung tissue so that it can get more oxygen to the lungs. So that's the process of capillarization. And so what do we want to do? We want a 426 Hemi with an 871 blower on top. You know, you put dual quads, 800 CFM dual quads on top, that's 1,600 cubic feet per minute of oxygen going in. We need to get the oxygen to the muscle. And so we started... When I started AF, we started lengthening out to about 10 miles. Well, if you're going six-minute mile pace, that's only 60 minutes. So that wasn't enough time period to get your body to react. And uh, I was at a coach's clinic with Paul Pilkington, who's the, one of the coaches at Weber State. He coached for a few years at University of Illinois. Um, you might recall, some of you are older, in about 1990, he, won the, he was hired as the... Uh, the rabbit at the LA Marathon. They had all of these big named uh, marathoners there. And so he was going out and they didn't stay with him. And halfway through the race, he said, hey, I feel good. So he went on, won the race. And, and all of them, all of the pro runners were like, well, that's not fair. And they were whining, complaining about the rabbit winning the race. And so he was being interviewed on ESPN. He had a hat that said whining with a circle and a cross through it. So we put that on our cross-country shirts the next year, no whining. Um, but I was at a coach's clinic, and he said 70 to 90 minutes, and, and I was reading in a lot of other things, and that's about what everybody, all the physiologists agree. Um, so that's one thing that we started up. Instead of going 10 miles, instead of going 8 miles for our capillary runs, we went to minutes. Now, high school kids are high school kids, so what do they do? 70 minutes, they'll go out 35 minutes, and then they'll come back in 35 minutes and get the minimum amount of time. Um, um, if they're young, they'll come back slower. And one of the mantras on our program is that we always want negative splits. Because I had a group about 2005, 2006, 2006, 
And I would go out with them, and I would come back at the same pace, and they would come back like two minutes later. I'm like, wait, this isn't right. You race how you train, so if you're slowing down on all your runs, then you're going to race that way. You're going to slow down during the race because that's what you've conditioned your mind to, to tell you to do. And so we tell the kids, you know, we want to come back with negative splits. So if they go out in 35 minutes, they might come back in 33, and then they'll get more mileage running around the school on the grass or on the track or something. And so whatever miles they got out, like a lot of times my varsity boys, especially now when it's winter, they might make five and a half miles out in their first 35 minutes. And they'll come back and they'll, they'll get six, six, six miles, six and a quarter back. And then uh, the smart ones, they'll take an easy jog and get maybe up to 12, 12 and a half. Um, I have had some guys, Connor McMillan, when he was a senior, we went on a canyon run for a capillary over spring break. And uh, he started dropping like five tens, and he got almost, his goal, he said, for his high school career was to get 13 miles on a capillary run. He made it in about 72 minutes, 13 miles. And he's run 28.10 at BYU, so I think it kind of helped. Um, and the other thing we used to like to do is um, there's some really good donut shops that are about five, six miles away from the school. So we'd do a donut run. And we actually, the boys had a secret stash. They'd put all the coins because they didn't want to come back with their coins. So they have secret places by the donut shop where they keep all their change. And uh, so we go there, have a donut, and then run all the way back. And so if you need motivation for kids, donuts. And that motivated me to be out there in the morning too. So, Yes? How are you defining sustained pace? Sustained pace? Yeah. Well, you know, Coach Rincusi always said, you know, if all you do is long, slow distance, because people thought LSD meant long, slow distance. If all you do is long, slow distance, all you ever be is a long, slow distance runner. So for us, sustained pace, they might start out at 730. And gradually, my varsity guys, our goal is aerobic threshold pace. So that's about six minute pace for us, for, for high school boys varsity, you know, and so for them to average six minutes, they'll start dropping 555s, 550s, the better guys. I mean, Casey and Casey Klinger and those boys, they would be down 530s, 520s, drop down maybe 510s like Connor did. And, and they would get 12, 12 and a half miles in 70 minutes, but then they would go an easy mile, get 80 minutes. I've had some guys try up to 90, but the, the, the goal is come back faster than you went out. And two seconds faster on the way back than way out, that's a success. There's been a lot of capillary runs where I ran back and got two seconds faster on the way back. For me, I was glad because even if you do that, that means they've sustained their pace for the whole run. And, you know, at least they're not slowing down and coming back slower. And that's the one thing we're trying to overcome.